Hello. Welcome and thank you for joining the Middle School Matters webinar entitled CSR, Collaborative Strategic Reading. My name is Megan McKinsey, and I am the Tier 2 Coordinator for the Middle School Matters Institute. And I'll be moderating today's call. Our presentation today focuses on the use of CSR in the middle grades. Specific strategies that comprise CSR align with several principles and practices within the reading and advanced reading sections of the Middle School Matters Field Guide. If you wish to learn more, Middle School Matters Field Guide is available for download from our website. Our presenters this afternoon are Dr. Michael Solis and Dr. Sharon Vaughn from the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk and the University of Dr. Sharon Vaughn is the Executive Director of the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk. She is the recipient of many awards, including the AERA SIG Distinguished Researcher Award and the University of Texas Distinguished Faculty Award. She is currently Principal Investigator on several Institute of Education Sciences, National Institute for Child Health and Human Development, and the U.S. Department of Education Research. Dr. Vaughn serves as a fellow to the George W. Bush Institute's Middle School Matters Program. Dr. Michael Solis is a research assistant professor in the UT Austin Department of Special Education and a researcher with MCPR. He currently directs an intervention project as part of the Texas Center for Learning Disabilities and works on the Promoting Adolescence Comprehension of Text Project, funded by Institute of Education Sciences. His line of research focuses on vocabulary and reading comprehension interventions for students with reading difficulties in grades 4 through 12. Prior to his work at MCPER, he was a special educator, reading specialist, and literary literacy coach for 10 years. And now I will turn things over to Dr. Solis and Dr. Vaughn. Thank you, Megan. I wanted to thank Christy and Saro for the opportunity for training this afternoon on collaborative strategic reading. I'm here with Dr. Sharon Vaughn. So before we talk specifically about collaborative strategic reading, which I'm going to refer to going forward as CSR, let's talk a little bit about why we need to teach reading comprehension in the content area. Well, there's been a big emphasis on that, both through the Common Core standard and also through some of the standards here in the state of Texas uh, that really emphasizes the need to uh, promote reading comprehension throughout students' educational day, so within science classes, social studies classes, and English language arts. What is collaborative strategic reading? Collaborative strategic reading finds a series of reading strategies with the use of cooperative learning. And it was designed specifically to promote content learning, language acquisition, and reading comprehension in diverse classrooms. CSR has successfully been implemented, and it is a great example of research going straight into practice. Here's a quote from the Miami-Dade County Public Schools Language Arts Director that really sums up how uh, excited faculty and staff at Miami-Dade County was after implementation of CSR. Before we get into the specifics of CSR, before we get into the specifics of CSR, uh, let's we're going to review the previous research that's been conducted. In 1999, a study was conducted by Bryant Vaughn et al. studied the role of peer-mediated strategies, one of which was CSR. The findings clearly show that average achieving, low achieving, and learning disabilities improved in accuracy for reading, word identification, 
fluency and comprehension. More recently, a randomized control trial study of seventh grade students that were participating in reading and language arts class, classes found that CSR enhanced reading outcomes for students versus students who did not receive CSR in both general education classes and classes specifically designed to Here's a brief overview of CSR. When teachers start with CSR, they present four reading strategies. Preview, click and clunk, just wrap up. Strategies are, are presented to through the use of explicit instruction, which includes modeling, guided practice, and independent practice. Once students receive re, uh, Acquire a level of mastery with those strategies, students begin to move into cooperative learning groups, heterogeneous small groups, and apply the strategies independently. So what are the goals of CSR? By embedding CSR instruction into the classroom two to three times per week, effective accomplish the following. Increase conceptual learning, acquisition of content knowledge, Approve access to general education curriculum for struggling readers and students with reading disabilities. And most importantly, improve reading comprehension skills for all students, particularly those that are struggling. Here's an, this slide here presents a nice graphic overview of CSR. You can see from this overview that there are pre the preview strategies presented prior to reading. During reading, the strategies of click and clunk and get the gist are employed by students. And finally, after reading, a wrap-up strategy that includes asking, uh, developing qu different question types and a review of the important ideas. Of So this is Sharon Vaughn. You can kind of see from this diagram that what occurs before they read the preview um, really tries to capitalize on students' background knowledge and help sort of jumpstart their interest, also in making connections between what they know and what they're going to read. And then you can see with the practices that occur during reading, they really are trying to promote opportunities to sort of think about text and whether they're understanding it, and sort of identify the clunks when they don't. But also because of what they do while they're reading, which is trying to get the gist, you know, what's this mostly about, and then being able to integrate all of that into a synthesis after they read. And by the way, when we talk about reading, we're not talking about the entire text that you want them to read from the beginning to the end. It could be as many as four or five pages. We're talking about breaking that text into chunks that are manageable for the students that you're teaching. For some of you, that might be a couple of paragraphs. And for others, it could be even less text. Or maybe if you have proficient readers, more text. So as teachers introduce CSR, the strategy of CSR, they follow a scaffolded instruction model. An easy way to think about this is I do it, we do it, you do it. Within the modeling phase of instruction, teachers model each strategy, providing appropriate uh, scaffolds and think alouds to show the students explicitly how the strategies work. During the teacher-assisted phase, teachers, teachers provide guided instruction, meaning the, the students have an opportunity to receive feedback as the students learn the strategies and start to move towards mastery. And finally, one of the most important phases is the independent phase, where students have an opportunity to work through the strategies independently and afterwards receive additional feedback from the teachers. This graphic, graphic represents what you can expect over time with your CSR instruction. 
On the left-hand side, you see teacher responsibility. On the bottom, you see student responsibility. As you can see at the beginning, teacher responsibility is really 100%. The teacher is responsible for showing the st students explicitly what the strategies of CSR look like. And over time, what you hope is that, this, that more and more of that responsibility is released to students and that towards the, towards the end of this instruction, 100% of the responsibility for use of CSR strategies is placed upon the student. Here's the first strategy, preview. Why is preview important? Preview is important because it gives you as a, the instructor an opportunity to go over key vocabulary that will help students make connections with text. It also provides an opportunity for you to both access background knowledge and just as importantly, provide background knowledge that your students may not have. So what does preview look like with CSR? This graphic represents some of the steps that you need to take in order to have a successful peer preview. First, you need to state the topic, present two or three of the important proper nouns or key vocabulary concepts, ask students to brainstorm, write what they already know about the topic, and finally ask students to make predictions and state the purpose for reading. I also want to point out something that's very important to keep in mind is that the preview should only take three to five minutes of instructional time. It's a way to prime the pump prior to reading. So what's the teacher's role during preview? The teacher's role is focusing on making sure that students understand the important ideas that will be key to providing uh, understanding of text, the background knowledge, the pre-teaching of concepts, and the vocabulary. After the preview, which happens before reading, we'll move into click and, clunch, click and clunk, the first strategy that happens during reading. So one way to think about click and clunk is the analogy of riding a skateboard, which usually resonates with middle school students. You're riding along on your skateboard, and you're clicking along, click, 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 and all of a sudden you hit a bump, clunk. Sometimes when our students read, they hit a clunk, meaning that they've gotten to a portion of text that they have difficulty in understanding. Why is click and clunk important? For many of our students, the idea or the goal of reading is simply to finish. And it is viewed as a passive process rather than an active process. They simply go through the motions paying a little attention to the text. We need to support students and work with them to bring that text alive. We want them to pay attention to what they read, meaning clicks, and to be aware of when they need to slow down and think about it more, the clunks. Here's how you introduce click and clunk. After you go through the concept of clicks and clunks, uh, the next question for students is, what happens when I come across a clunk? A series of fix-up strategies are taught to the student that allow them to work through and gain understanding of text when they come to a clunk. An easy way to think about these four strategies is to group the first two strategies together. The first two strategies ask students to use context clues or to read around the word that represents the clunk and look for clues to help them gain meaning. The third and fourth, fourth strategy asks students to look more closely at the word for clues to gain meaning by breaking the word apart, looking for prefixes, suffixes, or root words, or also to look for cognates. You may find that when you start asking 
students to circle, underline, or otherwise indicate clunks in the text they're reading, that they find out really quickly if they don't have any clunks, then they don't have to do any additional work. Ah, that's not what we have in mind. So you may need to uh, encourage students to identify clunks by saying something like, when I read this text, there were two areas or two words that I am pretty sure you're going to have as clunks. So as you're reading, I'm going to go around and see if you've identified them. That will be a way to sort of encourage and make students realize that it's both OK to have clunks and we expect them to. So let's go through a couple of different uh, ways that you students to use context clues in order to gain meaning of text. The first are explanations. So within the text around the clunk, there may be some, some words that support a clear explanation that will help them under gain meaning of the, the concepts. A second is that many times you'll see examples within the text that will also help them gain meaning of that clunk. And third, sometimes within text you'll see a definition that is provided within the sentence or a sentence close by that helps students gain meaning. Here are some examples of context clues. In the summer, the bold birds molt or lose their feathers. And see, within this sentence, this would go with fix up strategy number one. The words lose their feathers will help students gain meaning of the word molt. Peregrine falcons are raptors or birds of prey. Again, you see the use of context clue or, or strategy number, fix up strategy number one. There are context clues within that sentence. And the third one, a snake's body is very supple. It can blend, it can bend easily, it can fit in small places. Here, fix up strategy number two, or context clues within sentences around the clunk sentence, help students gain meaning of the content. The third strategy, morphology. When providing instruction on morphology, you need to teach students to look more closely at the word and one great way to do this is to preview your text, identify words that could potentially cause difficulty, and pre-teach those common root words, suffixes, and prefixes that will support gaining meaning from text. When going through CSR and asking students to employ these fix-up strategies, ask them to identify the prefixes or, or suffixes in words. Provide students with sentences or paragraphs with target words bolded ask them to look for root words, prefixes, and suffixes that they know. Here's an example of how the use of morphology can help students gain understanding with, from text that is difficult. Volunteer, to choose to do something. If we add the prefix in, not, and airy, the suffix meaning associated with, Involuntary refers to something that happens not by choice. Here's an example sentence. Blinking your eyes irregularly regularly is an involuntary action. Through explicit instruction on the prefixes and suffixes within that word volunteer, students will have the tools necessary to understand better the meaning of involuntary within that sentence. And fix up strategy four, cognates. This strategy works very well for many of our students who are English language learners. 30 to 40 percent of words in English have a related word in Spanish. Teaching students to think about and recognize these cognates will support their comprehension. However, one thing to keep in mind is that not all words that look similar in English mean the same thing in Spanish. So fix up strategy four needs to be thought about ahead of time and used with care. Here are some examples of cognates.
Just to review, we've now talked about preview, the strategy that's employed before reading. We've talked now about click and clunk, which helps with the metacognition of students, helping them pay closer attention to text and give them some tools during reading to help them when comprehension breaks down. Now we're going to move in to get the gist. Get the gist. Get the gist is a strategy that is taught to students to assist them in identifying the main idea or to summarize portions of text during reading. So when you're preparing to teach CSR, one of the most important things to do is to go through your text and identify sections of text that make sense for students to stop and develop a gist statement about that section of text. Why do we teach students get the gist? Well, as we all know, sometimes you don't remember everything you read. There's a very large empirical base to support the use of a main idea or summarization strategy as a means to improving comprehension. And it is a, it is a first step towards students uh, understanding and synthesizing the information to make inferences. Here's another thing that's important. For you teachers that teach in the content area, like social studies or science or math, problem solving, one of the best ways to learn is to be able to retrieve that you've learned. And I'm sure all of you teachers can relate to the fact that you say something, instruct in it, and then a day or two days later, no one seems to remember it. Well, one way to alleviate that problem is by asking students to work with the information. So if they read text in social studies and science, they read about it and then have to put some effort into it by summarizing or gisting our main idea, they are more likely to remember it. That's why CSR and Get the Gist are pretty effective in instruction. So how does Get the Gist work? The first step, in a section of text, students identify the most important who or what about that section. After identifying the most who or what, they Im Im identify the most important ideas about the who or what. And then students write a gist statement in approximately 10 words or less on a learning log, which we'll show you an example of a learning log a little bit later. I want you to take about 10 seconds and read this paragraph and think about putting together a gist statement. Let me give you an example of the gist statement for this particular paragraph on seabirds. The most important who or what? Seabirds. The most important information? Well, there were three things that we identified here in this example. Seabirds spend most of their time at sea. Seabirds depend on the sea and its island for their basic needs. The sea provides food and resting and nesting places. After identifying the most important who or what and the most important ideas about that who or what, we put together a gist statement. And here are a couple of examples of different gist statements that are approximately 10 words or less. We've now covered three of the four strategies. Our first strategy of preview, we do before reading. Our two strategies during reading, click and clunk and get the gist. Now I'm going to go over the final strategy, wrap up, which happens after reading. The wrap up strategy has two steps. The first step is what we call question generation. And this is a little different than what we often do in classrooms. Rather than asking questions and having students answer those questions, we turn it around a little bit and we ask students to develop questions about text. 
and answer those questions. Secondly, we ask students to review the text, think about it, and write what are the most important ideas from the entire passage of text. Well, why do we do a wrap-up? Again, a wrap-up is a, a good way for us to promote students remembering text, being engaged with that text, helping them develop a, a new way of thinking about the information they had prior to reading, and putting that together with the reading itself. Well, here's a way to think about a wrap-up. If you have a gist, um, a couple of paragraphs, and you continue to create gist over all of your sequence of paragraphs, if you link those gists together in the sized way, you have a wrap-up. So a wrap-up is really a combination of the gist over an extensive text. So as you're providing CSR instruction and you're working on wrap-up, it's important to ask students to share the review statements and provide a quick summary. Depending on those responses, you can follow up with short activities that will support further understanding of the content, or sometimes both. The second portion of wrap-up is question generation. With question generation, there are three different types of questions that you will ask students to develop. The first question we refer to as a right there question. This is a literal question that literally can be found right in the text. The second type of question, which is a little bit more complex, is what we refer to as a think and search question. This type of question requires students to take different portions of the text and put those portions together in order to answer the question correctly. And the third type of question is a higher order processing question of, called the author and you. This question is to be thought of as an inferential question that really pushes the students to think about their prior knowledge and think about the text. So what skills do students practice during question generation? Well, the right there question helps students remember important facts about the text. Think and search questions give students an opportunity to, to put together different ideas and make inferences within the text. And the author and you questions really give students an opportunity to stretch their thinking about the content and make connections both within the text and outside of the text. That concludes the introduction of the four reading strategies that are part of CSR. Now I'm going to talk about the cooperative learning portion of CSR. Why use cooperative learning? Well, there's a nice base of research to support the use of heterogeneous groups within content area classes as an understanding of text. Increases academic performance, motivation, and most of all, students like it. Really important. When students are working in groups, everyone in the group has to be held accountable for participation. No slackers. So cooperative groups don't work if one or two of the students do all of the work. And to make sure that everybody has a clear understanding of what their roles are within text, part of CSR includes the development of different roles that align with the strategies. So within each CSR cooperative learning group, teacher needs to designate what we call the CSR leader. This individual is somebody that has the skills to facilitate and help keep everybody on course with the jobs that they're assigned. 
This slide here is a, an example of a cue card that's been used successfully in some previous CSR implementations where it just gives little tips to the leader about what their job is and supports the facilitation of the work to be completed. The clunk expert is a very important role. And here again, you see an example of a cue card that provides very nice, detailed instructions to the clunk expert to have, make sure that they know what their job is, stay on, on track with what they're uh, to accomplish. The GIST expert, responsible for making sure that the students work cooperatively, think about and come up with ideas about what would be an appropriate just for each section of text that is and you're starting to see a pattern here that the roles align directly with the strategies of CSR. So we have our question expert who's in charge of wrap up and development of the different question types. Again you see the cue cards provide little tips and uh, assistance for keeping the students on track. So what is your role as teacher during group work? Your role is to make sure that you are staying engaged and are rotating around the room and checking in on the different groups throughout the entire process. It's important that at least once every two weeks you're spending an extended amount of time with each group. <clears throat> as you're walking around the room, make sure you do a a nice job of providing very specific feedback when you on about performance. One way to highlight this is if you see a one group that's doing a great job, you can stop and put a highlight on that group, have a signal built into your classroom where you pull the class together and actually highlight uh, some positive things that you've seen within the group that you're working with currently. So there are many components to CSR. It takes some hard work to get started. Uh, once you get started and start to, your students start to understand and master those strategies, and you start to uh, move towards full implementation, you really start to see a nice payoff in your classroom. There are many tools that will help you get started. One thing that's very important is that you, uh, you can either work with the Middle School Matters team or develop your own learning log that provides a scaffold so students have a clear understanding of what their tasks are both before reading, during reading, and after reading. Here you can see this learning log where there's places for students to fill in clunks, write their gist statements, uh, complete their pre preview, and also complete the wrap-up after reading. A reminder of the phases of CSR instruction. Again, in order to have successful implementation of CSR, it's important to follow an explicit instruction model. So first, you're modeling the strategies by providing think-alouds and models and examples of strategy use. After you've had good opportunity to model those strategies consistently within your class, you move into a teacher-assisted phase where you're providing explicit guided instruction as the, as the students begin working with the strategies themselves. And finally, and that's when the big payback, payout comes, is when you move into the independent phase where your heterogeneous cooperative groups are up and running you are simply going around providing feedback and serving as a facilitator as the students work independently through the text utilizing the CSR strategies. Now remember, this is not a linear process. There will be times that you will be going back. You will move into the teacher-assisted phase. You will realize that maybe your students weren't ready. and You're going to move, need to move back into the modeling phase. There are always opportunities and essential that you're reteaching these skills throughout the entire process.
So recommendations for teaching CSR. Think about integrating CSR instruction within your content area curriculum. CSR is not a curriculum. CSR is a set of strategies and the use of cooperative learning groups to supplement your content area curriculum. You will need to provide explicit instruction to students about when, where, and why to use the CSR strategies. Introduce the strategies one at a time. Make sure you provide feedback consistently. Remember the transfer of these skills is not act automatic and will need to consistently be supported. Here we go back to our graphic where we can go through the four strategies of CSR, preview, click and clunk, get the gist, and wrap up. So this is a really good time for you to ask questions, comments, or let us know anything about um, CSR that we might be able to help you with. I know some of you are probably wondering, gee, are there any materials? How can I get a hold of those key cards? Or even, you know, is it possible to have some of the examples that were provided? Any of those questions accessible to you? 